Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Jay Shu, Director and CEO of the Asian Art Museum of San Francisco. Jay has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. Thank you, Jay, for joining us today. Thank you, Mark, for having me. So the Asian Art Museum is an amazing institution that really reflects thousands of years of, of history, art, culture, and it covers 60% of the world or more. Talk about Asia as a place and as a cultural reference for the rest of the world. As you pointed out, Mark, 60% of the world's population live in what we call Asia. So the relevance of Asia is just self-evident. And, uh, you know, and, but we're not look, only looking at ethnicity, at the geography. We're also focused on the interconnectivity, that Asia's global relevance and connections. And that is endless. You know, not only throughout time, but also throughout regions, throughout the areas. You can think of a Silk Road, maritime trade. You can think of globalization today. So Asia is very much part of it. So may I say that, uh, you know, Asia has become an essential part of American life, economically speaking. So that is our great opportunity as a leader in promoting the awareness and understanding of Asian art and culture to make Asian art and culture an essential part of American fabric. And we're in the right place, San Francisco. One of the things that I find so fascinating is how we ha our, our views have shifted of the in the world with this communications revolution and the older ways of thinking where we were separated by these great oceans and massive journeys. We categorized people in these nice and neat little buckets and we couldn't see the relationship between the bronze work that was done in one area of the world and the bronze work that is done in another area of the world, the religious art in these different areas of the world, the, the ways of thinking that are reflected in, in cultural works. And today, everything is on display because everything is accessible. Yes, exactly. I think, you know, humans do have the need to classify, categorize in order to make sense of the world. At the same time, we must understand all the categories are artificial. Global has no beginning or end. It's a circular, it's rounded. And the geography is all about perspective. So people like to say San Francisco, California, for example, in the west coast of the United States. Yet, yeah, it's right. But I would like to say California, San Francisco, is on the east coast of the Pacific. So you see, the change of perspectives. Then we're in, right in the middle of this world phenomenon, innovation, whether technology or culture, diversity. I think you know, it's truly wonderful that the Asian Art Museum has traditionally been a leader in promoting the understanding of traditional Asian arts and culture. Now we're adding a major chapter to expand our storytelling to the contemporary era, to really make Asian art and culture, no matter when and where they are made, relevant to our life today. And what's interesting also is that the artists of different era, eras uh, were expressing their view of China as being the center of the universe, or Japan being the center of the universe, or indeed the United States being the center of the universe. So that, that is all challenged in a place like the Asian Art Museum, where these cultures uh, interact and they are in dialogue with each other. And these worldviews, which are in, in essence, diametrically opposed because you can't have two centers or maybe you can have multiple centers. These, these different cultures are in dialogue with each other and challenging each other in real time, allowing the, the visitor to go from one gallery to the next gallery and, and see how two people living at the same time have such different perspectives on the world yet have so much in common. Yes, exactly. You know, we, one big new emphasis is that we try to create the multiple perspectives. In other words, whether you call center or you call peripherals, really depending on your positioning, right? right. And uh, you know, the multiple perspective is very important. And same time, also to contextualize the art that we present, so that not only cross-cultural comparison, but also compare the art of the past with the art of the present to see if they have tangible connections, inspirations, for example. And then really what is most important is to really connect the art to life today, that why the Asian art should be relevant, should make our audience interested. I think 
if we can answer that question positively by making the art is relevant to the experience of the people living in the Bay Area and the people who come to visit us. That is the key, make connecting art to life. But what, what I also think is very interesting is the thought process that you and your staff go through in order to reach those conclusions. It's a very sophisticated thing. These are not connections that are automatically drawn. These materials had been in the collection for many, many years, and it takes a certain type of thinking and also a certain marketing savvy, an understanding of, of modern ideas and relevance, and then to engage people, bring them in, experience the art. There are some real hard-nosed business skills, as well as an artistic sensibility and art historical knowledge that is all part of what you're doing. Yes, exactly. I think one, my, one fundamental observation of life today is that our audience, everybody, wants to be in the driving seat. Any kind of uh, consumer experience, you want to be in the driving seat because the internet, the technology enable us to do so. So the relevance and the enabled audience to create experience on their own, but by giving the tools for them, enable them to make that connection, that's the key. And that's a key to success. And they, that, that's a key to make art come to life. Talk about your various programs that complement the visual art that you present. Yeah, I mean, of course, the core collection is the objects or the paintings, objects made of different media, they are static. But often the case, those objects capture the moment of dance or the music making or the other wonderful activities. And bring art to life. One big part is to actually produce indeed music and dance and other hands-on activities. And we are very good at it. For example, we just uh, uh, this past Sunday celebrated the Filipino-American History Month, full of uh, not only museum tours, but art making by the kids, but also music and dance from local Filipino groups as well from visiting groups. And two weeks before, we celebrated Korean Culture Days from East Asia. It's a, another wonderful but very different expression of arts and culture, but the commonality is that the people's common passion for self-expression, for art and the music. I think this is the connecting dot. So what is next for the Asian Art Museum? So the idea is again the same connection, connecting art to life and extend our storytelling to the present times, not only by showcasing the exhibitions of ancient arts and culture and connecting them to the, our life, but also actively building our contemporary art collection and contemporary art program to really be a platform to showcase the cutting edge expression by the artists all across from Asia. And more than that, we don't really focus narrow our definition for Asia only by geography and ethnicity. I don't really care about skin color of the artist. As long as artists work, has a relationship with Asia are considered Asian art and Asian artist. So we're going to really be in a very interconnected way, showcasing Asian contemporary art, global relevance and global significance. So that's that. In order to do that, we want to have a larger platform, physical platform. So we're planning to build a new special exhibition pavilion to really increase our platform to enable us to do the programs that we want to do to make Asian Art Museum more engaging and more relevant, essential to our life today. What an exciting vision. We're, we're, we're so fascinated to see how this unfolds over the next years. Jay Shu, thank you so much for sharing the work of the Asian Art Museum, and thank you so much for your insights. Yeah, thank you, Mark, for giving me the opportunity.